I am in the home studio of Carol McConaughey, a potter who lives here in Hopkinton, right near Lake Whitehall. And I have a uh, creation made by one of her students, and I'm looking forward to learning from Carol as well as talking about her life with her in the studio today, more about pottery, her world of art, and her life beyond as well. So come along and join me in the studio. Hi, Carol. Thank you so much for having me in your home here in Hopkinton, right across beautiful Lake Whitehall this afternoon. Uh, we are in your creative space at your home. Am I right? This is it. This is where I spend a lot of time. A lot of time these mm -hmm. days. And uh, uh, we are in the midst of uh, your pottery creation spot within your home and mm -hmm. uh, just outside. And there's beautiful surroundings. Uh, right behind me in the windows there. And in thinking about uh, your connection to being here in Hopkinton, I'm aware you are a traveler, you've been around different parts of the world. What is the story that landed you here in Hopkinton? Well, um, I guess 40 years ago, my husband got a new job in Southboro. Hmm. And um, because the job was out here and we had three little girls in Boston because we lived in downtown uh -huh. Boston, mm -hmm. it, he wasn't seeing the, the kids. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. we decided to move out in this area. Mm -hmm. So Philip drew a pencil line around Southboro where he was working at Data General. Mm -hmm. And um, this was one of the spots that we could have he ride his he could he wanted to ride his bike to work. Oh, and so that's what he did. Forty years ago. Mm -hmm. Forty years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so Hopkinton won. Hopkinton won, and I was really upset when we were moving out here because it didn't look like there was any artists at all. Ah. Because mm -hmm. I had my setup in there. It was a Boston Center for the Arts. I had a big studio and surrounded by wow. other artists, yeah. and it was so nice. And mm -hmm. so about um, a week after we moved here, a woman knocked on the door and said, "I." S because I used to be a tapestry weaver and I set up this tapestry loom. Mm. And she said, I'm a tapestry weaver. Would you like to be friends? <laughs> like, How about that? <laughs> wow, here we are in Neverland and uh -huh. there's artists that live here. Ah, so what a story then. Yes, uh, that was a good sign then. Hmm? It was a very good sign. And mm -hmm. then I kept meeting more and more artists and you know, the, Art Association got together and we were doing lots of things together, shows and uh, Poly Arts was defunct and so we started it up again. Oh, and, how about that? Yeah, it was uh -huh. really an interesting mm -hmm. blossoming time. Mm, so you're part of the history of the rejuvenating of the arts uh, in town? Well, Would you say you came at the right time? I think what happened is um, I wanted to just be involved in volunteering for the arts. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was my focus. My focus mm -hmm. was three little girls in school. Okay, let's start an art program at school. Mm -hmm. well, three little girls doing nothing in the summer. Okay, let's let's start the summer arts for children. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see the the uh, the homeschool association, which used to be the PTA. Mm -hmm. That's uh, you know it's not doing too much. Okay, let's uh, mm -hmm. let's do a creative arts part of the... So anyway, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it was. Wow. It was very exciting. Uh -huh. So uh, you made the most of uh, what your interests were in your new surroundings, which was right. brand new to you and unknown, right, in the wilderness of Hopkinton. With a lot of <laughs> other very creative people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And you happen to find each other somehow, so it can happen. I don't know how that happens, but mm. it's very nice. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, very nice. Oh, uh, that's good to hear. Uh, a nice uh, pioneer story uh, coming here and getting involved in the arts. And so here we are in your, what would you call this room? A studio? Studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a home studio. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is where you create your pottery uh, in particular. Um, and I know you're involved with other arts as well. Um, can you tell a little bit about what you've been creating here um, in your studio the last 40 years? Well, um, I, I've always wanted to be, well, I was a teacher, so... A teacher, teacher. what, with young children? Mm -hmm. Started off with adults. Oh, okay. At Southern <laughs> Illinois University. Oh. And, um, 
So I taught a beginning um, class in, in introduction to art. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first, you know, real teaching. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought I loved it. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. And so then I wanted to move back to Hopkinton from Illinois and started teaching um, on the elementary level. Mm -hmm. And oh no, before that I taught in the middle school. That was a disaster. So Why? Well, it was in a Boston public school system. Mm -hmm. And when I, the first day I went into the teaching, the, the classroom, one of the kids in the back of the room jumped up, ran across the back of the room and smashed her head against the wall. Oh, I'm like, that's a hard start. Oh my goodness, yes. this isn't anything like Southern <laughs> Illinois University. What are we gonna oh, do here? Oh, terrible. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a different, yeah, another time the, the vice principal came into my class and said, does any, did any, has anybody, does anybody know how to break into a car? Half the kids raised their hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's an anybody, odd question to ask. Can anybody <laughs> break into a car in less than five minutes? Four kids raise their hand. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. So a different um, kind of teaching atmosphere there. Yeah. And so you didn't last long and I moved on long. to elementary. Elementary school. Cool. That mm -hmm. was really nice. And then a middle school again, which turned into a better mm -hmm. out here. It was yeah. a, a nicer situation and then the high school. Uh, uh huh. And so, those were your last years in teaching in the at the school. high school as an art teacher. Uh, what did you teach over there? You mean in the hot in the in high school? Mm -hmm. I was the only art teacher. So only art teacher. Yeah. In fact, uh -huh. I'd come into the classroom some mornings and I would, like I'd have two classes and because I taught painting and drawing and then introduction to art and then. Um, uh, uh, Pottery, then sculpture class, and crafts for the non-artists. Wow! And so sometimes I'd go into the classroom, and the kids would come in and say, "What class is this?" <laughs> so, uh -huh. so anyway, and then um, there were other. Then I hired another person two years later, and then more oh, people, and how so about that. Yeah, got up to five people. You're an art institute of yourself, right? <laughs> It was crazy. So now um, we talked about uh, your being a teacher for me today and have a little experience in pottery while we continue talking. Right. Um, and um, you suggested a pinch pot. That yep. is something that I could give a try while we're talking about your life a bit more. So here I know very little about uh, how to proceed uh, because I haven't had uh, any experience beyond Plato. <laughs> so Very what shall I do? Play -Doh. So the first thing, I mean, what you have to do is you have to make sure that there's no bubbles in the clay because oh. it'll pop or explode or okay. destroy in the kiln. So, so what you need to do is, if you've ever made pie crust... I've avoided that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, what you're, what you're doing is you're smashing the clay okay. together with two hands and so that you're getting all of... All of the bubbles out, mm -hmm. and if it, if this was a an old piece of clay, I would do this a lot. Uh huh. Yeah. And the way you check to see if there's any air bubbles is that you actually cut the clay with a wire, and if there's any bubbles like that in the clay, then you have to wedge some more. Right. So now I'm going to stick that together. You wedge that piece. All right. Here we go. Check for bubbles. Check for bubbles. I have one, right? Bubbles. Oh dear, more yeah. smashing. All right, so okay. just to save time. Yes. Can you take all right. that one? I'd be happy to. All right. <laughs> and what we're making, these are all student pieces. These are all oh, yeah, um, pinch beautiful. pots. And they are... May I feel? Sure. Oh, yeah, so they have a shiny uh, surface uh, paint. It has glaze on it. Glaze. So it has underglaze and then glaze. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see, I mean, this was some a, a project for a class, but mm. the, this, these kids both wanted to have gray or black underglaze, and mm -hmm. then cutting through mm -hmm. all of the uh, black paint to get these fabulous oh. designs. This, this, this is the same kind of pot we're making, yeah. you know, except there's a little top on it, and it opens. Wow. Uh -huh. This is the same ball. Huh. Except we added a top onto it. So, mm -hmm. and then these are little things that you can put into the surface and make oh. it a wrap. Uh huh. Music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, 
Well, uh, so I can't wait we to go. see what I do here. All right, so, so the old, the, it's so simple, but mm -hmm. what you're do, going to do is start off with a ball, mm -hmm. and then you're going to put your finger right in the middle of the ball, and oh, you're always protecting the piece by supporting on the underneath. All right. So you push down, not all the way down to the bottom, so okay. you have to kind of judge. And then you're using this kind of a movement. Mm -hmm. So you're pushing your finger, not on the top, but in the very bottom of that hole. All right. So, okay. and turn. Yeah, I think, I, I think I've got what you're talking about here. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And, um, you know, oh. if we're going to have a really finished piece, what we'd do is we'd make sure that it was uh, very thin on the edges. But Oh, okay. So, so you come with is, something like that? Yeah, because you don't want a heavy ball. You want something very light. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is hollow on the inside. So you're trying not to touch the upper lip. Mm -hmm. So you're Just pushing, down. pushing. Mm -hmm pushing the clay, pushing all the way around, and keep turning, pushing, pushing, pushing. Mm -hmm. And you can smooth off a little bit to make it rounder. All right. Pushing, pushing, pushing. So I'm, I've pushed the clay all the way up to the top, but I haven't touched the lip because that dries out. Now the next thing, after you've got that pretty, pretty smooth in the smooth inside. Smooth on the inside. Yeah, okay. it's, it, there's a big oh, hole. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And even my grandkids make these little things. Mm -hmm. So, All right, three so and five. It's possible. But there's a much heavier. <laughs> now the next step, you're going to start closing up. So this that's going to be a round ball. So you push the clay in and push the clay in. Uh, um, what do you mean in? Um, okay. So this is round here, but I'm going to take my fingers on one side and push the clay together. So what I'm doing is I'm closing that open space. Mm -hmm. So you keep on pushing. All right, this is the pinching. Yep. Right. Well, we pinched out, now okay. we're pinching in. A lot of pinching in here. Right. Okay. That's why it's called a pinch ball. <sighs> Okay, so it looks like you're getting a little nipple here. All right. So if you keep on pinching, my finger's getting too small here on the inside. So I could use something like this to go around. Mm -hmm. I can still push a little bit until I get a nipple. Ah. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to close it up. All right. Okay. Oh, right now we're going to close it up. Excuse me. You don't have to close it up. This is just one technique. We could leave it open and make it kind of, you know, uh, the variation. Shape. Okay. But anyway, what we're going to do is make one of these balls. So that's what that's the fun thing about teaching. People will say, "Oh, can I do it this way?" Yes, you can. Uh huh. So there's that, no mistakes in pottery. Uh huh. No mistakes at all. Yep. Uh -huh. So now you sort of close it up until you get this little teeny point. And what I have them do mm -hmm. is I have them blow into that top mm. and then close it up. Wow. So now it becomes uh -huh. a round, round ball. And you can take that off. You can leave it on. It could be a pumpkin mm -hmm. or it could be just a very, very round ball. So you do have to spend some time cleaning up this. Clean, yeah, that's but there's an sense. ear pocket in the inside so you could play with it. For okay. instance, you could roll it into a ball, mm -hmm. or if you want to, you could make it square. The possibilities. Or you can make it flat. Mm -hmm. You can make the bottom so it'll sit up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then after, you usually let this dry for a while mm -hmm. so that it, it um, sets up. And I already set this one up. This one's oh. been drying for a while. Wow. And just because I want you to see what happens, All right. if I can find my knife. Darn it. Let's go here. This is a sharp knife, so I like to keep the top on. Mm -hmm. So, oh, first of all, what I have to do is make a hole where I want the top to be. And then, let's say I want to do this one. Mm -hmm. If you cut it at an angle, 
all the way around and not even Stephen. What I'm doing is I'm curving it if I just did it around. And then you can see what the inside yeah. of this pot is going to be like. It's a very fine cutting tool to yeah, it's an exact make that work. Knife. Exacto knife. Okay. So ah, take this off. yes. And you can see. That looks good in there. <laughs> yeah, so this all has to be cleaned up, you know, so it's nice and clean. You can put this back on and you can decorate it with paint. Mm. Or, oops, the reason why I make it into a kind of a um, liver shaped piece is, is because I wanted to, there it is. I wanted to, um, so I can figure out where it's supposed to go back again. And then mm -hmm. if I'm doing this, I have to put a handle on this. Okay. Because you mm -hmm. can't take it off. Right. That would be difficult. I'm just going to use this thing right now. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. Clean off that. Clean off that. You can paint it. I mean, you can put, well, I'll put this back Ornaments. on it just to, just to pretend. Mm -hmm. You can put a little knob on it. Mm -hmm. You can put a bigger knob on it. Mm. You know, right. you can put More balls -like. on the inside. For the rattle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is uh, wet balls. You put them on the inside, mm -hmm. and they'll dry in the kiln, and that's what will give you that ah. kind of shaky business. And you have a kiln here? Down in the basement. All right. Uh -huh. So you keep that kiln busy? Very busy. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. I know that you have uh, so much pottery around here in your home, and you had just opened up your home as part of the Whitehall artist's uh, walk. Yep. Uh, did you call it on that day? It was um, Whitehall Artist Studio. Artist Studio. Tour. Yes, which was wonderful. I had the opportunity to come and attend uh, and take a look and was here in your home and pottery lined up everywhere. You still have it in your other room. Yep. Um, Pretty much everything is going to be gone in a couple of months though. Cause where does I've it got, go? Well, um, Mass College of Art is having a sale, mm -hmm. a jury, or jury sale, so mm -hmm. it's going there and then um, we're doing a show in, the primarily potters are doing a show in Newton. Oh, okay. So Great. that's going to be in June. And then July, there's a show down in Marshfield. And then Poly Arts is in September. And then primarily potters is in October and other fairs. So. Wow, fantastic. So yeah, it's getting so, around. It is beautiful what you create. So I have to, what I have to do is I have to work two months in advance of whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, those are all uh, different and interesting uh, stages of creation and then letting go and sharing it out into the world. Right. right. But I do take a couple of months off here and there. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm going down to North Carolina tomorrow. Oh. Spend some time with my grandkids. <laughs> uh huh. And then that we've got a nice. bike trip. I'm a big biker. Yes. Uh, I mean, a 10 speed biker. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go on a bike trip, Lake Constance, in um, September. All right, wow. And uh, how many miles do you cover on a bike trip? Mm, probably about 25 miles a day. Wow, well, that sounds really intense and exciting, and you discover the landscape while you bike and get right. good exercise, too. Yeah, it's um, the way to go. To it's the way things. to go. Mm. Or unless you want to hike. Aha, uh -huh. which you do also. I do like to hike, but um, when we go away to foreign countries, it's a little bit faster to go see things when you're biking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's true. So travel is a part of your life as well. Um, has travel influenced your creation of art? I, you, I know we didn't talk about the other things that you create in addition to pottery, but uh, have in um, seeing different parts of the world or country, uh, has that contributed to your change or your uh, interest in different me uh, medium? Uh, or designs? Or? Every time I go to a foreign country, I, 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 I'm sure my work is influenced. Mm -hmm. um, not so much as like when we went to Japan, or last year we went to Tibet and China, oh, wow. and that was uh -huh. a really wonderful vacation. But yeah. I, I think more so than influencing my work is influencing my life. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yeah. the whole idea of going to a very poor country and seeing mm -hmm very poor people that don't have enough to eat. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of that I need to make a bigger garden outside here. Yeah. And I need to help, you know, do something here in the United States mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people here in the United States that need help. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's an important uh, teaching to come away from uh, where you go and, and travel in that way. Right. Mm, and you got to know people there. Uh, that's usually part of your uh, visiting and where you go and right. get to know their stories as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also, we have to go to museums and see mm -hmm. beautiful things. And beautiful things. Because that's one of the things that I feel, I mean, I'm, I know I'm, I'm old now, but I feel like I've had a gift of surrounding myself with creative people and creative things. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me feel like I want to give other people some of those things because my life is full of um, beautiful things that other people have made. Mm -hmm. And they're in my house, and I get all that energy from mm -hmm. those objects from the people that have made them. Mm -hmm. And looking around at art, I mean, anywhere. To, if you go to a museum or you go to outside and look at a flower or whatever it is, I think it's really important for people to surround themselves or look at or use or uh, enjoy um, beautiful things. And that, and that was my question. Uh, may I push a little more? Uh, why do you think that we have them uh, uh, in this world or reach toward them to create them or to... I mean, why uh, do artists create things? All people. Why are we... Why? I, think, I think people... It's harder now to see beautiful things because in, the, in that, that generation that's coming up through the school system now, the elementary school, they're so involved in this mm -hmm. and here. Mm -hmm. because they don't get enough time to look around or go camping or mm -hmm. take a walk in the woods or, or look at something deeply. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 it, it sort of scares me a little bit to think mm -hmm. that that's that's where we're going. Yeah, so I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do this, yeah. and I certainly don't want to go out to eat and watch a couple beside me do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they're texting themselves. I don't know what mm -hmm. they're doing, but yeah, it's very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, if you're talking to some, that's another whole grace or art or you know talking about ideas mm -hmm. other people have. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just... Yeah, I was just curious about uh, your perspective because you do create so much of uh, beauty um, that you share out in the world and goes in different places. You probably will never know some of the places they go. And um, I'm just wondering, we have uh, only a few minutes left, hard to believe, but uh, where do you think your roots of being a creator not only a pottery, but tapestry and painting, painting as well, part of your creative past. How, how did that get started with you? It sounds like you also love nature. I don't know if you had your hands in the mud when you were little. or Collecting rocks and leaves and little things and had them all over my bureaus and uh, windowsills. Uh -huh. and so junk. beautiful things from the earth and you're bringing them in and, and touching them. and. Right. Uh -huh. So yeah. that's been a and part looking. of you. Because I was a dreamer when my mother would say, get up and do something. You're sitting there dreaming. Ah, well, mm -hmm. that's, I don't know. Oh, okay, all right, I'll do it. I'll do that mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So dreaming yeah. is important. Yeah, or thinking, mm -hmm. just enjoying what's what's around you. Mm -hmm. because Paying attention close up. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, and um, now you are in retirement years. And you have been creating more beautiful things and you're teaching pottery. You're a great teacher, by the way, with my first pinch pod here. Um, and you, you have to take that home and finish it. All right. <laughs> I think I have a little more work to do. Back and paint it. <laughs> um, uh, what is the recipe, would you say, for the retirement years? Um, what Or advice that you have? Uh, how are you making the most at this point? You have done so throughout your life, it sounds of your surroundings, wherever you have been. Right. Well, I, I want to continue on doing something until my hands get so much arthritis and they yeah. won't work anymore. But then I'll find something else that, I mean, people people paint with 
brushes stuck to their hands because they can't, I mean, stuck to their arms because they mm -hmm. can't paint. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you can still do things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I like, I also want to spend more time with my grandchildren. Yes. Uh -huh. That's uh, something very important and mm -hmm. you to have me. Three. I have three in North Carolina. That's mm -hmm. where we're going down there oh, this weekend. And then I have two in Boston. So ah, I well, see them quite often. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good number to have uh, in your not too far away. And uh, right. I hope and you have a, a wonderful time uh, tomorrow, beginning tomorrow for your next journey. Yep, we're doing a bike ride down there, 50 mile bike ride for diabetes. I have wow. my oldest granddaughter is a childhood diabetic, so oh. or juvenile diabetic. So. Well, I'm going to do a bike ride for her. Well, it sounds like you are always finding ways to give um, in addition to the work of being a teacher and a creator of beautiful things and mm -hmm. giving out into the world in different ways. So I wish you good days going forward and look forward to the next time I see you at a pottery exhibit or maybe out in the woods around here hiking perhaps on Whitehall trails. Yep, kayaking. Kayaking. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe maybe if I get my kayak out there, yeah, I'll join you someday. Okay. But uh, thank you so much. Hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt, co-producer of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, an HCAM series honoring poetry, story, and song that takes place on the third Saturday each month before a live audience. Guest features share their art followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Others come to listen and be part of this warm and welcoming studio and to wake up a bit to arts and to life. You're welcome to join us and to tune in or visit our website for our weekly program. Hope you can join us. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive in Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interest. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at HCAM.TV for movie days and showtimes.